Hey everyone, welcome back to another Lettuce Garden scripting tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about how you can disable jumping entirely within your Roblox game and after your character hits a brick. And we're also going to talk about some implications that we have to consider when we talked about cross-platform devices. So when you disable jumping in your Roblox game, for example, we want to hide the jump button on mobile devices. So we're going to cover how to do all that. If you want the assets for this video, check out the link in the description. And if you get stuck at any point, check out our Discord server. You can also find a link to that in the description. So we're going to split this video up into two parts. The first part of this video is meant for those who want to disable jumping entirely in their game. And the second part of the video is we're going to talk about how we can disable it for uh, players who touch a brick. Or, you know, you can also use it for a stun gun if, if a player is hit with a stun gun. Um, also restrict them from jumping. However, I, I do want to mention if you are interested in that second part of the video where players lose the access to jumping, um, this first part is very important for you to watch as well because we, t we set up the system for that second part within this first part as well. So if you want to disable jumping entirely in your game, you can come up to where our starter player is and scroll down to where it says character jump height in your properties menu and you can just set that to zero. So if our character jump height is zero, obviously they won't be able to jump. Now this leaves us with an issue though. On phones, if we test this out, you'll see that we, we aren't, like we can walk around, um, but we can't jump. We, we click the jump button, we aren't jumping, which is what we want, right? Um, but the jump button is still showing up. And I think that's a bit of a, it's a weird, message to give to your players. Hey, there's a jump button, but you can't jump. So let's try to find a way to disable that. And this is the part that is important for the second half of this video as well. So make sure you play, make sure you pay very close attention to how we disable this jump button. Um, so if you come up to your players tab and click on your player and go into your player GUI, you'll see a touch GUI here. And within this touch GUI, here's where we have our jump button. And what we want to do is we want to set this jump button visible to be false. Um, and we are going to connect it to our humanoid. So if I come up here to our workspace and find my humanoid, you'll see that if I scroll down, I have a property here also called jump height zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if our jump height in our character's humanoid is zero, we're going to set our, our jump button visible to false. So let's come out and make that script. So let's add in a new script to starter player scripts, local script. And sorry, I meant to say starter character scripts uh, because every script within starter character scripts gets parented to our character when the game starts. So we can say, lo uh, we can say local character equals script dot parent. And then we get our humanoid. So local humanoid equals character wait for child humanoid. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna to connect to run service and every frame we're gonna to check to see our humanoid's jump power. So let's bring in run service equals game get service run service. Run service dot heartbeat connect function. So every frame we're gonna get the um, character, the humanized jump power or jump height, sorry. So local jump height equals humanoid dot jump height. And then we're gonna make a variable here, local should show jump button equals jump height is bigger than zero. Okay, so what, what, what's happening here? We're getting our character, we're getting our humanoid every frame we're checking the humanoid's current jump height and we're setting the variable should show jump button. If the jump height is bigger than zero, that's going to be true. If it's zero or less, it won't be less. It's just going to be zero. Then obviously we're going to not want to show our jump button. So now we need to get our um, jump button as a variable. So we have our touch GUI that we saw. So local touch GUI equals players dot local player dot player GUI dot, sorry, colon, find first child, touch GUI. And we need to import our players here as well. So local players equals game, get service players. 
And we have to make sure we have to remember that this code runs on every device, right? So PC, Xbox, PlayStation, it runs on everything. Um, and those devices won't have a touch GUI. So we have to say, if not touch GUI, then return. So if they're not on the phone, then we're just gonna ignore the rest of our code. Local jump button here is equal to touch GUI, find first child, jump button, true. And what this true does is we saw earlier our jump button was actually embedded within a frame in touch GUI. And because we're saying find first child with the second parameter being true, we are basically telling Roblox, hey, I don't care if the jump button is embedded within a frame. I want you to kind of skip over every uh, parent within you and just go right to the jump button. So that's what we're doing here. So rather, rather than having to do multiple checks to, to get to the jump button, we can just go right to it. And we also want to make sure that the jump button exists. So if, if not jump button, then return. There might be instances where the jump button might not have been created yet by Roblox or it's been deleted for some other reason. So if the jump button doesn't exist, also return. And then what we can do here is we can say jump button dot visible equals should show jump button. And now if we head over to our test mode within our mobile emulator, Okay, so it's not, seems like it might not be working. Okay, so we actually have a, a typo. I forgot to, I forgot a letter. So line 11, I wrote find first child. I forgot an L. Find first child is the what it should be. All right, so it seems like it's worked. Um, we can move around our character and we don't have our jump button appearing. So we're gonna move into the second part of our video now. Um, so let's go back to our starter player here and set the jump height back to 7.2. And we're going to add in, let's actually, let's exit the, uh, the emulator for a moment. And we're going to add in a part in the workspace here. Let's make this red and put a new script within that part. And we're going to call this script remove jump. So basically, anytime a player hits this red brick, we want to turn off their jump in. And obviously, this can also be done with a stun gun or whatever other system you have in your game. Whatever, like what we're doing here is what you can do in that system as well. This is just a much straightforward, simple version for me to show you how this works. So what we can do is we can say script.parent.touched, connect, and we get the hit part. And we can say here, local character equals hit dot parent local humanoid equals character find first child humanoid and if the part that hit our brick isn't a character the humanoid won't exist so we can say if not humanoid then return and if we do have a humanoid we can say humanoid dot jump height equals zero and now when we test this out I'm going to go on our mobile device here once again, but this will work across all devices. When I spawn in, because we've reset our jump height to be 7.2, I get my jump button. But when I walk up to this brick and touch it, my jump button goes away and my jumping has been disabled. So that's how you can disable jumping within Roblox. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you want the assets for this, check out the link in the description. If you're stuck or need help with anything, we have a Discord server as well. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.